There we are. Welcome, Rebel Writers. We will give the Facebook bots a minute to let you all know we are here live just a few minutes past the hour. Uh, those of you who were eager to join us at the top of the hour, my uh, sincerest gratitude for your patience as we work through all the things that uh, technology and full lives bring us. <laughs> 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 that's just the way it goes sometimes it does yeah it does. it does well rebel writers we are back with another rebel writer in action and i am so excited to have this conversation today with you tracy so let me introduce her i'm also going to check here on my phone i have multiple screens happening here just to make sure we are indeed live there we are and let us know down in the chat where you are uh, joining us from today, whether you're watching us live or the replay, we're so excited to get into this conversation. Um, so let me introduce you to my guest today, Tracy Desjardins. She is an international health coach, a mind body eating coach, a fitness professional, and a writer who specializes in holistic coaching for women. Through her own prior struggles with weight, dieting, binge eating, sugar addiction, and emotional eating challenges, Tracy shares a compassionate space with other women working through similar trials. Tracy's professional work is centered around helping women discover their very own transformative steps to finding sustainable peace with food, body, and self without restrictive dieting ever again. I am so excited to get into this. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy is the author of The Diet Free Diva, which is available on Amazon starting tomorrow. Yeah. Pre-order it today. We will uh, get you that link in the comments. You can pre-order today. Tracy describes her life story in the book as it relates to the battle with dieting and weight loss and offers an effective groundbreaking approach, right? A rebel approach to healing. From emotional eating challenges. Welcome, Tracy. I am so honored and grateful to have this conversation with you today. I love it. My heart just started racing just from that intro, Renee. This is great. I think because you said the word rebel and you yeah. and I go along, like we just connected right away. We just met here a couple minutes ago and I'm just feeling you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I totally agree. This is I feel like you and I probably could have one of those like never ending conversations about our paths and how we've, you know, woven through the different personal struggles we have and taken that to really create uh, new and better lives for ourselves and the people that we work with. Yeah. Um, and so maybe that's how we start, right? The Diet Free Diva, your book that comes out tomorrow. I'm so excited. I can't wait. Um, you know, how did you get to a point where you knew that this was a message mm. that other people really needed to hear? Oh, I love it. And I really knew exactly when that was. So, you know, when pandemic struck here, we all were, we were forced to just be, you know, inside without any control over anything that we can normally control. Mm. And, you know, when I was like 10 years old, there was this unapologetic side of me that just rocked her world. And, you know, I would say even, you know, earlier than 10, I was just one of those kids that I didn't really care what I looked like too much. My hair was always a mess. I was very loud. I was always running around. I made friends easily. And I, I was a little chubby and I wore like plus size clothing and I didn't care. Right. Right. That was me being my, I mean, I was kind of rebellious as well. You know, I was kind of, this is me. And it was almost like I had blinders on to anybody that had an issue with it. Right. And that, that side of me went dormant. I'm going to kind of fast forward here when I was around 12. And then I started, you know, the hormones kick in. I started to care about what I looked like, started to hearing, you know, what boys like, what other girls admired. And that unapologetic side of me, that re little rebellious side of me was no longer something to be proud of. Of, and I was actually embarrassed of that. So I took that side of me, which is really a big part of my spirit. I talk about that in the book. And I put that really on the, in the closet. I shut it out and I felt like I had to be somebody else. 
<laughs> and so I, I started dieting to try to fix my body, mm. to fit into the designer clothing and all of that. And it, you know, I look back on that with such compassion now, like that was a really rough time. And I, you know, started dieting. And of course we know how that goes. Um, I, I, over the trajectory of the next several years, as I tried to be somebody else and fix my body to be accepted, I'm fighting with food, eating, eating things that didn't taste good with willpower. Cause that's what everybody talked about back then. This is like eighties, right? right yeah. And um, I'm sucking down the diet Pepsi and all, all that stuff. And it, it created, I, I had a sweet tooth as a kid. Okay. And it took that and blew it out of the water. Yeah. Like a Loch Ness monster. So of course, when we restrict food, it doesn't end well. And it never, I, if, if I had a dollar for every diet or rest, whatever restrictive time frame I started, which is dieting with food, mm -hmm. uh, if I had a dollar for all of that, I'd probably have like a, a collection of designer handbags. Right. <laughs> so, uh, and you would have thought that I would have caught on to that, but I didn't. I kept picking myself up, dusting myself off, not talking about just trying harder because that's what we're taught by right teachers and coaches and you know parents have just keep trying and push which is great but when it comes to dieting that doesn't work yeah, I did that for decades Renee so to answer your question when I finally as I chased my life doing amazing things teaching fitness having a blast trying to out exercise my binges mm. I, finally got, I got tired of it my body was tired my mind was tired my spirit was tired and I was losing it mm -hmm. And I'm drowning in pints with an S of Ben and Jerry's. What flavor are we having today? Every night for two weeks. Some of you've heard this so many times here tuning in and it's the truth. And that was my reality because I was forced to sit by myself during pandemic and quiet, nothing to do. And I realized there's a problem here. So I got some help mm -hmm. and I joined an amazing community called Quit Sugar Summit and I hired a coach to help me. I started posting Renee in the community. Yeah. And when I started writing, it felt good. I started a Word document too at the same time. Like I'm just, I'm just typing whatever came up for me. And I was at war with myself and food and I wanted to figure it out. I felt good when I wrote. Mm -hmm. And then I, as I posted what was coming up for me in my healing um, uh, with some of the tools that I present in the book, I started to make friends. People started to respond to my posts. I was putting some vulnerable stuff in there. I didn't mm -hmm. know anything. Great. And they're responding with such love and support. Oh, and me too. Me too. My heart expanded. So did my spirit. And I started to feel unapologetic again. I'm onto something. Then somebody, a few people said to me, Tracy, do you have a book? Do you have a blog? And I'm like, hot damn. <laughs> so I found Keith Leon and the You Speak It writing program. Oh, and I just started and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I, you know, I cried and God bless their patient editing team. Um, Cause I had to block out that perfectionist side of me. And he said, Trace, oh, yeah. please trust the process. I was struggling with that. Well, you know, Keith. So, you know, Tracy, you're jumping the tracks here. I can't help it. Come back on. Trust me. It was a, a learning, learning experience there, but that, does that answer your question? That's when I decided. It does. Right. And I think what I, there are so many things that I want to pinpoint here in your story because um, whether it's food or something else for a lot of young women at that age, right? 12 years old, that transition from, you know, the childhood fierce little girl to all of a sudden, you know, during that transition and the socializing and all of a sudden all these weird things we you know everybody everybody's weird that's the thing I also I teach junior high <laughs> taught junior high for years everybody's weird but you think it's just you right but that piece that I really wanted to highlight that you said was you know hiding those bits and pieces of you hiding your rebel self in order to you know, fit in essentially. And I, and I think everybody goes through that on some level. Um, but really, um, honing in on that, that power and control that food and the relationship to food can have isn't just about the food. 
And in fact, in some, in some, you know, isn't just about the food, isn't just about the weight. Uh, but it's so much bigger than that because it taps into those pieces of ourselves that maybe we're ashamed of. And so it's a real deep healing process. And shame is like that huge, huge piece of it. So I don't know if that's something you want to speak to, um, you know, how, how you can reconcile you know, or how do you talk about reconciling that once you realize um, that that plays a role? I love it because you're speaking to the step one in my book. I have five. <laughs> steps. Okay. This is why we get along. I know. So um, absolutely. Yes. You said some amazing words about, you know, shame and rebel and shifts and changes. Okay. My book's a little different. I don't give anybody a meal plan. I just want to scratch my eyes out when I hear that, you know, there's no meal plan in the book friends. And our relationship with food is a magnificent story. It's a story. We, I mean, who relationship with food? I mean, it's like the biggest relationship ever. We've been eating as soon as we came out of the womb right. and there are clues along the way, whether you've had a war with dieting or not, that relationship is there's tons of jam packed clues with what was going on in the past. Mm. You know how I said, I opened up a word document and I just started typing unbeknownst to me, what was going on is I was regurgitating and reflecting on my food story, trying to find the root causes to why the hell at the age of 50 and my pound in this Ben and Jerry's, I mean, was I put on this earth to just start and, and binge and recover from diets? I mean, wasn't I meant to do something better than this because mm. I was exhausted. And dieting fuels that rebel rebellious um, aspect that doesn't serve us. Mm. It's a different form of rebellion. Like there's being your unapologetic diva self, and then there's the the, the food rebel. Okay, right. and you know it, it it can be hard to identify. But I encourage in my book, and I have a workbook that goes along with the book that's included in a download in the one of the back pages there online. It's on my website. How to get started with that? Because it's weird. And we love weird. We're right. We're all weird. Right. Well, how about if we start with something weird? And that is, I teach you how to write your food story because we can't rewrite our story for better, for elevating until we look at where we we've come from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so brilliant. That's so brilliant. Elevating for sure. Right. We can't, we can't do better until we know better and until we're conscious of where these things come from. Oh my gosh, writing your food story. Um, I am definitely going to get that uh, download. And I know I've got a link to that too. Um, because I personally, food and I have a very interesting relationship. <laughs> and we don't need to necessarily get into the details there. But it, um, you know, even like as a, as a child, how we're, how we're raised to think about food is different, you know, for a lot of different families, you know, some families are the clean the plate, you have to eat whatever you're given. And some families, you know, oh, you don't like it, go make yourself a PB and J. Others, you know, there's no, I mean, there's such a, a wide variety of that. And then as you become a parent, you know, then you're making, you're also making different choices in your relationship shifts with food. Um, and, you know, I just, um, I just so I, I like can't wait to get my hands on that because I want to look at that story because that is like you said the key to making a shift. You have to see the big picture in order to know like how you got where you are and to see where you want to go. Well, you know, I hope everybody else feels the same way about you because I have encountered some resistance with some women that I work with now. Where, I, huh? You want me to what? Huh? <laughs> right. And, and here's the thing. We're not used to reflecting and thinking and going inward. Right. We're just like, where's the meal plan and how much exercise, where do I sign up with you for this? Yeah. Oh, so we're not used to that. So you really, with my book, I'm, I say it a million times, openness and curiosity because we have the diet culture programmed in us. We have, well, you should be able to have that in moderation. I'm sorry. A lot of people can't have sugar in moderation. I'm one of them. No, I'm a, I, I'm either all in or not at all. I just can't. Cause if I do, then it just, 
it, that's like another whole story. I'm actually the co-host of the, the Quit Sugar Summit coming up. Ninth Quit Sugar Summit. It launches on September 26th. It's huge. And so I'm having a blast interviewing all these amazing um, experts on all things sugar. Anyway, that's another whole story. But yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we've been programmed to not trust ourselves and not reflect on our life. Mm. Let's just believe in the dieting program because of we don't have answers when we do. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And yeah. that's the rebellious, right? That's the rebellious nature of this book. Like you do have the answers. You don't have to seek, you know, outside of yourself for the validation or what's true for you. Like yeah. you have the truth you and, um, and that's the place, which doesn't mean you don't need support. We all need support and accountability and community and people who are cheering us on that is a, that is a must in order to, to make any shift in your life, to make any well, sort of changes. You know, Renee, I held <laughs> even like my fitness friends that are out there, hopefully watching right now. Like I didn't, sh some of you knew some of my challenges, but I, you know, I showed up with a happy face all the time, teaching my classes and training people and stuff, because that was my job. And I love that, but nobody knew how deep my war was with food. I just felt like out of respect for them, they were putting their trust in me. Like I was a fitness professional. Well, you know, I should walk my talk with perfection. And I wasn't, first of all, who does, but I right. had that Doesn't belief exist. Yeah, yeah. for so long. And, um, yeah. So this, what made me mad here is what really fueled the rebel writer in me, Renee, when I realized that I lost my self-trust when I bought into dieting, that is the root of my problem. I didn't have an, yeah, I was a little bit of a chubby child. Had I not started dieting at 12, it probably would have worked its way out. I was, I was meant to go through this because here I am doing the work now. Right. Um, but like, gosh, darn it. I, I, I sold my, we sell our souls to the diet industry. Tell me what to do, please. Please help me fix my body because the world says I need to be thin. Thin is in. I need to weigh 130 pounds. I don't weigh 130 pounds. I need to disrespect my hips. Are you kidding me? I, I gave birth to two kids. I'm in relationship with these hips. They did one right. for me. Do you see how crazy it is? It's time for a shift. Yeah. It's time to just stop the madness. And we need to take back our power. We've got life to live. There's a diva right. part of us that is hidden when we're fighting with the scale, food, our weight to be enough to then go do our thing. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I just like, that's it, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. We have so much more Getting. to give. <laughs> oh, oh, it's yeah. true. It's so true. We have so much more than whatever this, you know, here, I just ate some chocolate, but Look it's at you. But it's 73% cacao. So right. Well, oh, Renee, right. how does that dark, healthy chocolate make you feel? I'm co I'm your coach. Renee, how does, yes, how does that chocolate yes. make you feel? Well, it makes me feel a lot better than the cupcakes that are downstairs that I didn't eat. Then I'll say you're onto something and we'll celebrate that together. Do you get what I'm saying? And yes. guess what? That was your choice. It was my choice. <laughs> it was my choice. Oh my goodness. So much more to give. When I think about that power struggle right and it's all so internal oh. like you said you know you show up you put the smile on your face you do the things you do which is great and you know having that that deep internal struggle takes up so much time and energy yeah and so yeah. i i love that you speak to that directly um a lot of us don't realize that there's a dialogue going on. Mm -hmm. We have a dialogue. We have these two voices, literally just babbling. Well, one voice is babbling louder than the other. Right. That's the inner critic. Right. We also have an inner nurturing voice mm -hmm. that, that loves to just sit back and wait for attention. But this bully voice, this critic is just babbling away, saying you should do this, you should weigh less, you shouldn't eat that, you're not trying, you're not doing enough, you aren't enough. I equate that in the book to the Wizard of Oz, green-faced witch from the wet, the nasty lady in the, you know, she's riding that bike, 
saying horrible things to Dorothy. And then you have Glenda, the beautiful witch that shows up with the sparkling dress and the magic wand. And she talks to Dorothy in a voice that we all just want to melt. Right. That's the inner nurturing voice. Mm. She tells Dorothy that she has all of her power from within. Guess what happens at the end of the movie? That wicked witch is melted by a buck of water. So I equate that to transferring. We elevate and promote as our CEO of our command, more of the inner nurturing voice. I talk about how to do that in the book. There's our movement. And guess what? You can't buy that with a credit card. And they never tell you that in dieting programming. No, no, they sure don't. They sure, sure don't. Heaven's sakes. Yeah. I love it. Well, and what a great metaphor. It's funny. You say two voices. I'm like, oh, I might have one or two more than that. Yeah. I always, I love the, the movie Inside Out and the reference to all the different feelings and, and uh, things that go in there, but it's true. And the fact that it was so simple, right? With, with just the elemental water to melt away that nastiness. <laughs> And if we, like, we would never talk to another human being the way that voice, that inner critic speaks to us inwardly. Never. And if you are, um, then you're not a very. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Renee, the women that I work with, of all the strategies that we go through, you know, there's always, there's food. We talk about food, of course, but that's where they get stuck mm. because it's so ingrained. But we can turn that ship around. Yeah. We can do a reconstruction of who is CEO in our lives now. And what's so amazing is when you just start to try, you just start to talk to yourself differently. It's amazing. It's amazing the healing that takes place. Because yeah. then we learn to realize how to meet our own needs, how to really meet our own needs right. without right. gorging on food. Right. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Mm. What? Let me just think. And in that, we've got a few more minutes, and I want to tap into. Um, first of all, I love the cover of your book, <laughs> just <laughs> visually. I struggled with this. Hey, can I say something about the cover? Please. The original, the original design had this skinny chick, the full body on there. I said, "Hold up! Oh, wait a minute! I don't want to see skinny legs on my book." Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Um, I'm not going after this. Like, I don't want it to look like a book for skinny girls. Right. That's another topic. Right. I want it to look like a book to promote healthy diva. I want women to feel good in their bodies, whatever they look like. Right. So right. Thank, yeah, I, you made me think of that. And I'm so happy to have the opportunity to explain. I had, I had them cut the legs off. <laughs> yeah, I did. I said, we, we have to change this. Right. Right. <laughs> Well, and the power, right? It's really how can we feel empowered in our body, in our minds, and in our spirits? I mean, you you spoke to, you know, the broken spirit. Uh, and, and, you know, obviously we're here in Rebel Writers, I, you know, speaking to how healing and encouraging it was for you when you started writing through this process. And I would argue that everybody could probably write about something. Yes, it comes easy to some than others, but there's therapy in just typing or writing with a good old fashioned pen and paper. Uh, it doesn't have to sound right. It doesn't have to be a best selling book. Right. Get it out. It's healing. So healing. Yeah. So healing. So let's see. If you had. A group of women sitting here in front of you, all who maybe have a similar story or shared experience, um, the relationship with food. What is the one key takeaway that you would want them to walk away with today? Mm, I love that. The one key takeaway is that we have our own inner wisdom that knows what we like to eat, how much of it we should eat for our best health, and what those answers are in relation to our future relationship with food, mm -hmm. our body, and what we were born to do on this earth. 
we were all given a talent and we can't maximize that talent, which makes the world a better place when we're at war with food and ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. We do. We all have that innate talent power. There are things that, that we can do. Um, and we have to feel our best and yes. be our best in our bodies and our minds and our souls in, yeah. in order to, to do that and to really, you know, not I, that I, everything has to be perfect, right? That's not what, <laughs> not what I'm saying here. No, you don't no, need no. to be perfect to start, right? And hey, you said something that's really important. You mm. used the word feel. Mm. Dieting doesn't encourage us to notice how we feel. Yeah. In Maybe fact, the opposite. The opposite. It's a disembodied way of approach. Mm. Intuitive diet freedom. Yes. Brings in the inner wisdom because then we start to notice, hey, how am I feeling? What's going on? How, how is my body? How is my attitude? How is everything about me reacting to what I'm putting in? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I talk all about that and how to, how to set that up for, for you. And it sounds overwhelming and it, I get it ladies, because we've been programmed to chase the scale and to chase somebody else's rules Yeah, and yeah. to take the money. Right. <laughs> Enough. Right. Right. Oh, well, Tracy, I'm so excited. This book drops tomorrow. You can pre-order it on Amazon and we will Actually, get that link. Can't. I'm not sure why I've had so many people ask me about the pre-order. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. We have time. It, it's, a, it's available now. You can order, you can actually buy it right now and order it. However, here's the deal. If you want to do me a wonderful, beautiful favor, wait till tomorrow. It's going to be on sale <laughs> at 99 cents for the Kindle. You can't even buy a sandwich for 99 cents. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> $14.44 for the paperback. And those prices go up um, afterwards. But if I can drive all my traffic and tomorrow. all my sales tomorrow, then I could live out a dream, not for all the money I'm going to make. I'm not doing that for that at all, but I could possibly end up as a bestseller with this mission. Mm. So if everybody could hold out, I'm not sure why Keith didn't set that pre-order option up. I know he's got a reason for that, um, but I think this, this might be why. So I'm shouting to the rooftops, everybody. Thank you so much for order tomorrow. Number 15. Well, and I will be sure just to make sure that you have your proper ordering party tomorrow. I will post the link, the Amazon link tomorrow in the rebel writers group. Also, mm -hmm. you can have it today but I'll remind everybody tomorrow to go ahead and purchase. Um, right. And you have, it's on sale tomorrow yeah, and tomorrow. then, you know, prices will go up, but so catch it at its sale price, the diet yeah. for Eva. And well, please review, please review friends. Cause I'm new to this whole thing. And if you'd like the book, if you say something nice about it, then that helps me. That helps me. <laughs> with what I'm trying to push into the world, gives me more opportunities to spread this, this message in this book. And it also helps me learn from my next one. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Already thinking about the next one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's true. You know, I, and I really just want to honor Tracy, your, your, the work that you've done, not only for yourself, but really understanding that in order to help others in in a similar way that you had to be brave enough to put it out there. You had to have the courage and the support and the discipline to write the thing <laughs> that, you know, yeah. You know how we don't give each, give ourselves enough credit. Those words that you just said, I haven't stopped to give myself that credit. Mm. I think I've just been so productively pissed that somebody has to say something different about right. the problem. So I can't wait to watch this back. And I'm going to, I'm going to write down what you said, because I need to give myself that credit. It's not my nature, but I'm working with my inner nurturing coach. Yes. Yes. Give myself credit where credit is due. I just wanted to get the damn thing out and here I am. So it is time to celebrate. It is. It is absolutely wow. time Thank to you. celebrate. I'm grateful for your words. I really appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations. This is huge. 
This is totally huge. And uh, I can't wait to read it. And let us know out there in the comments. Um, check in what is landing for you if you're watching the replay. Make sure to let us know uh, what's resonating, what's what's calling forth for you. And, um, and then go get yourself the book. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> The diet yeah. preview. Well, thank you so much, Tracy. It has been an honor and an absolute pleasure to be with you today. Thank you so much, Renee. This has been a blast. Awesome. All right, Rebel Riders, we'll see you next time with another Rebel Rider in action. Take care.